Time now for the RV Podcast Interview of the Week. Interesting, entertaining, and helpful information about the RV lifestyle. Here's Mike with this week's interview. Well, Joel Holland joins us right now from Harvest Hosts. And Joel, it's time to go camping again. How are you? I'm doing great. And I think like most of your viewers, I'm itching to get back on the road. We live out in Colorado, so it's been our winter season. But the RV is um, winterized and I'm ready to de-winterize. So it's, it's and, exciting times. And you are going to be traveling with a, uh, a new companion, uh, a three-month-old baby girl, right? That's right. Yeah. Waverly was born uh, December 8th. She's had all of her, you know, baby vaccinations now. And um, it feels like she's going to be a good traveler. You never really know. But as no. far as driving her around in the car, <laughs> she seems to like to look out the window and, and it's very like really enjoys traveling. So she, she, she got that from us. Hopefully that carries over to the RV. Well, let's talk about this uh, year that uh, is uh, just now really getting underway. Uh, in most places, COVID at least seems to be on the decline. There's a general feeling that uh, we're going to be able to travel again. Uh, you guys did a pretty comprehensive study. In fact, I think it's one of the more in-depth studies that we've seen anywhere about uh, travel, RV travel in 2021. And can you give us a quick recap of what you learned from that study? Yes, absolutely. So we we have uh, 10,000 uh, RV um, mainly owners responded to our survey. So it's a lot of data. Um, and it was very positive for, for the travel outlook. You know, the high level data points, 76% of respondents said they plan to travel more this year than last year. That was not hugely surprising. What was surprising was that a full 60% said they plan to travel more this year than pre-COVID. And I, I think that represents this pent up demand. You know, there's a lot of people who are just like, I'm itching to get out and on the road. So um, we're going to see, I think 2021 is going to be a, a massive travel season. Um, and here's why it's going to be domestic. 81% of respondents said they do not plan to go internationally this year. 69% um, said they still don't feel safe getting on an airplane. And 56% uh, said they don't feel safe staying in a hotel. No surprise, 99% said they do feel safe traveling in an RV. So uh, all this data kind of points to more travel. It's going to be domestic and it's going to be in an RV. Now you guys uh, still had a lot of people that were out using Harvest Host locations in 2020. Uh, as uh, not every venue, of course, was open, but uh, I, I, lots of people were out there using it. So I, I wonder how uh, everyone is prepared for, for 2021. Now you've been around uh, long enough that everybody knows what Harvest Host is. Uh, and with campgrounds so full, how are you guys going to handle all that? All of our, all those, uh, those spots that are Harvest Host locations, how are they going to handle this demand? Well, and, and so that, that is a, that's what we focus most on, uh, are our host locations and increasing that number, um, with high quality hosts. And so we, we added, we like, hundreds last year where you know, we just announced um, this month, we passed 2000 hosts in our network, uh, which is great, right? Great geographic coverage. And it's a really good compliment to the camping and you know, campground inventory. Cause to your point, we're seeing already some early signs that campgrounds are sold out. State parks are sold out. National parks are sold out. So um, I think Harvest Host becomes a, a great tool in the toolkit, you know, for finding a location to stay especially during you know these busy times when it might be difficult otherwise. Uh, but we're working to add hundreds of new campgrounds a year a month. Our goal this year in 2021 is to add 1,000 new locations and end the year with uh, over 3,000 Harvest Host locations. Well, even the 2,000 mark uh, that you just uh, achieved, uh, walk us through a little bit of this Harvest Host phenomenon. When you started, and I, I feel... Uh, almost uh, vicariously mm -hmm. that I'm right with you on this because I think we started talking about you guys right when you started. Yep. But this this incredible growth that you've had, uh, and what do you attribute this phenomenon to? Why so much interest in these Harvest Host locations? Yeah, Besides so, the fact that they're free. You know, they're free basically, except for no, you know, well, whatever you purchase there. Totally. You know, it's interesting. I, I think that the, the free factor is the least compelling reason that Harvest Host has been so successful. I think what travelers are looking for are unique experiences. 
And, um, you know, campgrounds are super important. You know, they provide a lot of utility and I use them like hundreds of days a year, but harvest host locations are truly unique. And, you know, I've seen from some of your travels with Jennifer, you know, an alligator farm, right? Alpaca farms, staying at wineries where you can both indulge in the tastings and not have to drive anywhere, you know, parking among the vines or parking in a lavender field. These are really memorable experiences. And, you know, I don't want to speak for everyone, but one of the reasons that we got into RVing was to see the country and come away with stories. And you really get this like really unique experience and storytelling experience from Harvest Hosts. So I think that's why it's been popular for members, for hosts, you know, we, we have so many joining the program right now and it's because they love our members. In fact, when we survey our hosts and we ask them, why are you in the Harvest Host program? The number one response is that they enjoy meeting our members and sharing their lifestyle with them. I thought that was really touching uh, because the number two answer was the additional revenue, which I expected, right? You expect a business to participate in a program to make more money. It's a business. Um, but but really our, our hosts love our members because we have wonderful members. And I think that just translates, you know, our viewers are just typically wonderful people. I think about this alpaca farm that Jennifer and I visited in New Mexico uh, a couple of years ago now. And it was about this time of year and it was just truly a unique experience. We got up close with those alpacas. We got to learn about them. And um, the wonderful woman who runs that farm told us that she was so glad to be on a harvest house. She said that she couldn't travel as much as she would like at all, really, because she's caring for the animals. But through Harvest Host, she got to vicariously travel through all the people that, that she had met. And we've stayed in touch with her throughout the years. And I, I think that that's just been multiplied so many times. You hit the word experience. It's an experience. And, and I'd even use the word adventure. So many of those spots. Talk about uh, your favorite places. And, and we mentioned a few, uh, but uh, you also uh, are a participant as the yep. CEO of Harvest Host. What are your favorites? Yeah. Oh, it's fun. That's a fun question. So we of course love wineries because we love wine and I, and I love the setting. So, so I'd say on any, in, in every trip we go on, we always sprinkle in wineries more and more recently breweries and distilleries have started joining our program and we're up to a few hundred of them now. And, um, and they're really, you know, that that's a kind of a lot of fun and a whole different experience. And then we like to add in kind of our, our, um, museums and other attractions is what we call them. But I'll give you a couple examples. So when we drove across Kansas last year, we stayed at the Underground Salt Museum, the Stratica mm -hmm. Underground Salt Museum. And actually you, you take an elevator 400 feet down into the ground and you see how salt is made and you see them blasting it out of the walls. That was, you know, pretty cool. I had no idea how my table salt arrived at my table. Now I know, um, so very educational. Uh, driving through Nebraska, we went to the Golden Spike Tower, which is the world's largest train yard. And they have this huge observational tower you can go up and sit in. Hundreds of thousands of trains couple and decouple every day. I mean, the scale of this operation is mind boggling. Um, and it kind of brought out my inner child. It was like, everyone loves trains, seeing it was really cool. Uh, and the last one I'll say, um, Mount Washington Cog Railway in New Hampshire. It, it's, a, it's a railway that's been there since the 1800s. And this thing at, at a certain point is on almost a 45 degree angle, chugging up a hill yeah. using coal. I mean, it's cool. So these are the unique experiences that I love talking about. And this is what is available out there. We have found the same. Uh, one of the things that we really like are farms because, you know, you, you just take for granted how food gets to your table and uh, the amount of work that goes in, the dedication to the land, the stories you hear from the farmers uh, at your locations. In fact, we're going to go on uh, just in a couple of weeks, we'll be staying at one. So uh, the big news for Harvest Host in the last couple of weeks, though, I saw in all of the trade publications was a $37 million uh, investment. Uh, what was that all about? And what will you do with all of that? Yes, um, that was a big announcement. And it's very exciting. Uh, we're essentially going to use the money to continue growing this program. Um, number one, to make it available to more RVers, because it, I really truly believe that any RVer that uses Harvest Host comes away, you know, a little happier from the experience. So we want more people to know about it, which means we need more locations, right? We want to be able to support, like right now we have 2000 businesses. I'd love to have 10,000 small businesses all over the country 
in our program, both because it's great for our members, but it's also really good for the small businesses that we work with. Um, we, we, you know, we've ran some, some numbers this year. Our members are going to spend over $40 million with the hosts that they visit. And that translates into an average of an extra $13,000 per host uh, that's in the program. Some of our hosts are making $50,000 a year in additional income. And, and that, and number one, we never take any of that. There's never any cost to be in the program as a host. We charge nothing. Um, and we've had some really heartfelt stories of, of hosts who are going to lose, essentially lose the farm because of COVID. And Harvest Host members were the only ones who continued showing up because they were able to safely travel in the RVs. So long-winded way of answering your question, we're going to grow membership and we're going to grow the hosts. That money's going to be used to do a lot of hiring. So we, we have a, a number of jobs that we're hiring for. Um, and we're going to invest a lot more in our technology uh, in our, and in our marketing and advertising. Now, uh, we should explain how this works because uh, there's a fee, a membership fee that we as members pay. And then uh, while there is no charge to overnight, uh, the member is expected to patronize the place that they're visiting, a winery, buy a bottle of wine or the farm, some produce. Walk us through that a little bit. Yes. It, it, thank you for pointing that out. So our annual membership fee is not expensive. It, it really isn't. It's the cost of like one or two nights at a campground. The reason we keep it so low is that our members are um, kind of expected to support the local businesses that they visit. And so what we say is, you know, take some of the money you're saving from a traditional campground, purchase the local product. So buy the wine, buy that fresh produce that you mentioned. Um, on average, our members spend about $50 per night. It's not a requirement. We say spend $20, right? A minimum of $20 to say thank you. But amazingly, our members spend an average of $50 per night. Um, but they come away with more than just a place to stay. They always come away with fresh honey, you know, alpaca scarves, a case of yeah. wine. So you're not leaving empty handed. And it feels good to support these small businesses, like you mentioned. It, it, it does. It does. Walk us through 2021. Uh, Joel Holland, where do you see 2021 going? Not just for Harvest Hosts, but for camping in general. You've done, done the survey that we talked about, yep. uh, but from your own gut instinct, as you talk uh, to other hosts and as you stay tuned to the industry, what do you think 2021 is going to look like? Yeah. So I can give you some pretty specific you know, evidence that 2021 is going to be huge. January and February of this year, we saw about a three, between a 300 and 400% increase in traffic to our website and membership signups over last year at this time. And remember that January and February of last year were pre-COVID. So, so there's, there's really no, it's not that last year was small, last year was normal. This year, three to 400% higher in the winter months. To me, that says that March, April, May, June, July, August, I mean, it's gonna be bananas in a good way. I mean, I think people are gonna be out exploring and adventuring. It's gonna mean you're gonna, you're gonna need to plan a little more ahead, right? If you're, you're call those hosts a little bit earlier, make those campground bookings a little bit earlier, be prepared for more people on the road. I think that's the big thing this year. How early should people call? Because many of the sites say, you know, just a day ahead of time, but uh, I think it does require a little more forethought as you start to look where you want to stay. Yes. You know, and it all depends on where you're going. So if you're in a hot spot, right, if you're down in Florida and, you know, we have a couple of very popular locations there, it requires a little bit of, you know, maybe a week, you know, a week or two ahead of time, give them a call uh, or use our new booking system to, to reserve. When I travel, I typically do it like one to three days in advance because I like the spontaneity of RV travel. So I use the Harvest Host program not too far ahead. I, I go a few days out, but I also try to choose locations that are a little bit off the beaten path, right? It's easy to choose that location is right off the highway, um, but everyone's doing that. So I like to look for the ones like in Kansas, there's an alpaca farm, Heartland Farm, run by three nuns in their 80s. Yeah, It's only yeah. like a 15-minute drive off the highway, but it's amazing. And so um, it all depends on location, but I think you can – Then I'll put it this way. You can be a lot more spontaneous with the Harvest Host program than you're going to be able to be with campgrounds. Now, we're talking uh, – we're recording this uh, in uh, mid-March and uh, – I want to, uh, this kind of goes forever. That's the beauty of podcasts and videos that they're on there forever. But mid-March of 2021, as we record this, there is a, a, a time announcement that I want to make sure all of our listeners and followers receive because uh, prices are going up. 
So walk us through the current membership and then what do they do uh, if they can get uh, that, uh, that renewal or their first uh, membership before April 1st of 2021? Yes. So currently membership prices are $79 per year, which gives you access to 1600 um, wineries, breweries, farms, distilleries. For an additional $20, you get the golf upgrade that adds on about 350 golf courses. Um, on April 1st, we're increasing prices to $99 per year uh, for the standard membership. However, it's only going to affect people who sign up after April 1st. And one of the things we've done, because we've raised prices in the past, we raised them in 2019, we never raise prices on existing members. We find, you know, we like to reward your loyalty, right? So we have some members who joined six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years ago. They're still on the program. They're still paying the price they paid when they signed up back then. Uh, we never raise prices on existing members. So um, if you sign up, you know, now, and I would recommend, you know, go going to RV Lifestyle, go to the website, use yep. their link. Um, and their coupon code, because you can actually get a discount, that discount's locked in for life as well. So whatever price you pay, there's no surprises. It's not like a cable company where they give you a low rate and then jack the rate on yeah. you later. I hate that. So yeah. we give you a price. That's the price you're going to pay forever as long as you're a member. And, and we will put a link to that uh, and it'll be right on, on the website. And that is one of the, the neatest uh, things about Harvest Host is that uh, they can get that locked in now because it is going to go up. It is particularly with the demand in, uh, in RVs. Well, Joel Holland, um, the harvest host phenomenon continues 2000 host sites. Now, the only thing I didn't ask you about is, uh, cause we know about all the, the cool, the regular sites, you know, the breweries and the farms, but you mentioned the golf courses. We've stayed at a golf course and I almost hate to tell people about this because that is one of the neatest secrets about harvest host. When you stay at a golf course, you're pretty much all alone at night. You have incredible scenery. I mean, a golf course, and there's nobody there at night and early, early in the morning. Uh, how did that come about, and uh, how does that work? Uh, it's a little extra fee for uh, for members, but uh, you might want to give them an idea about the golf course membership part. Totally. So um, it, it is an additional fee. It's not much. It's like a twenty dollar um, upgrade or add on. The reason it's separate was we actually bought the RV Golf Club in um, November of 2018, and the way that we paid for the purchase was to make it a, a an upgrade for our members. Um, what's interesting is now about 30% of our members have taken the the golf upgrade, so it's very popular. Um, I promise you that 30% of our members are not golfers. And, but what's nice about the golf course inventory is that most of them do not require you play a round of golf. You can simply go to the clubhouse, you know, have breakfast before you hit the road or grab an, you know, grab a nice sandwich for lunch or have a cocktail in the evening. I mean, it's nice. They always have food services, um, in the pro shop or at their, you know, at the, at the, at the bar. Um, and like Mike said, I, the, the golf courses are beautiful. I mean, they're just beautiful. And a lot of these parking lots, they empty out completely at nighttime. And we're usually parked right along one of the holes. So you're like looking yeah. at, you know, a, a hole. I like to sit there and have a beer and watch people struggle while they putt because it just makes me feel better as a bad golfer. <laughs> we were doing that at the one we stayed at and I was watching this guy and he's trying and he, he came over and he said, all right, he says, quit watching. He says, come over, you see, you do better. <laughs> so I went over and I, I borrowed his clubs and I, we putted and uh, he offered to, they like, want to play around. And I said, no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm good, you know, and uh, we, we were having a couple of refreshments and I brought him over as well. So you get to meet people. Okay. So, well, 2000 locations now, again, uh, we'll put the link at rvlifestyle.com and uh, for harvest host, and uh, you can lock into that current rate right now. It'll never raise on you again. And uh, current members uh, renew now and you won't get stuck at that longer. Uh, anything, anything bigger than that, man, you can't go wrong with the, uh, Harvest Host. The Harvest Host phenomenon. Joel Holland, CEO, congratulations on uh, the big investment and uh, the continued growth. And uh, we'll see you out there at one of your Harvest Host locations, hopefully this year. Thanks, Mike. Always a pleasure.